Greetings from the End Time Apostolic Christian Holiness Church, located at 650 South Warren Avenue in Columbus, Ohio, where Jesus is Lord and our pastor is Bishop Dr. Derek A. Reeves. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, our order of services have changed and are as follows. Sunday School at 9 a.m. Sunday Morning Worship at 11 a.m. Our weekday services, Tuesday, Bible study at 6 p.m. Wednesday, prayer at 7 p.m. Our services will be available via Zoom and Facebook Live. Let us join in as the Word of God comes forth that is able to heal, save, and deliver. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day, forever faithful towards me. You're always providing for me. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. One more time. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercies. Your tender mercies I see. Day after day, forever faithful, forever faithful towards me. You're always providing, you're always providing for me. Great is your mercy, great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace, great is your grace. Amen. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. I just had to, to get that in. Hallelujah. He's loving. He's kind. Savior. Blessed Savior. Amen. We thank the Lord. He's worthy. Amen. So we thank the Lord for his goodness. I give honor to God who is the head of my life, to Bishop Reeves who is not here, and the pastor who is not here but forever present with us. We thank the Lord for being able to be under such an awesome ministry to receive tutelage, to receive training, uh, teaching, and uh, grace for the times when I just wasn't thinking quite good enough. Uh, the, the Lord would use Bishop Reeves to say, um, <laughs> And I'd say, okay, sir, let me, let me try it again. And so I thank God for those times because it is in that I find out how to be a leader, to be merciful, and to lead in such a way that people can grow under leadership. So I'm going to use this morning a few scriptures, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 and Psalm 23 and 7. Amen. But I thank God for being God. Bishop Reeves and Pastor King in their absence. Amen. I thank God for my wife, uh, my children being here, my daughter, grandson. Amen. And I thank God for Lady Reeves being here. Amen. We praise the Lord to her. Amen. And we thank God for the ministers, Evangelist Hicks, Minister Sanders, Minister Hudson. Amen. We thank God for you, Minister uh, Joyce Thomas, Evangelist Thomas, Evangelist. We thank God for each and every one of you, Evangelist Pantoja. We missed you on Friday. We needed to hear that voice. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. God is good. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We ask that you move as only you can to cause your spiritual heat to envelop us and keep us, that we may hear what you have to say unto us. And in that, God, we walk away able to implement and, and apply those things that you are called for us to move forth into. We bless you. We honor you and magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. So I thank God for each and every one of you. I want to go ahead and get into uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Psalm 23 and 7. We thank God for his goodness. Psalm 23 and 7 reads as follows. I'm sorry. Is it Psalm 23 or Proverbs 23? Let's go to Proverbs. Amen. I believe we are going to look at Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Yes, Proverbs 23 and verse 7, thank you and forgive me. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let's stop right there. I want to talk to you briefly, briefly, and we're going to move through this. Because the Spirit of the Lord says on today to say this, I'm so happy and grateful so happy and grateful. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. I never really thought of this verse in the context by which I heard it a couple of weeks ago. That in understanding this verse, God thought so highly of you and I that he wrote and inserted us into his plan at the very creation. We have been on his mind since the beginning and that is before the foundation of the world. When we consider in the Hebrew that term thoughts, the term is makashaba, to a, it is dealing with a contrivance, concretely dealing with a texture, a machine, or abstractly an intention, a plan, whether bad, a plot, or good advice. And then that term comes from the term in the Hebrew, kashab. A, it is a primary root properly dealing with a plating or an interpenetrating of something being woven into. And so when thinking about that verse, I think about the fact that God thought so highly of me that he has interwoven and intermingled me into his plan. And before I got here, before I was even conceived in the womb, he knew that something was supposed to take place and thought so highly of me and you that he not only formed and fashioned the earth, but before he did that, he intermingled and interpenetrated each and every one of us into the plan. That means something to me that we are in the 2000s and there's a reason for us being here. There's a reason for you to live as long as you have lived because there possibly is a word, there possibly is a ministry that God is trying to cultivate in you. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. I'm thinking on now Moses who was 40 years in the desert, 40 years in the palace, but at that time was not really understanding the fact that there was greatness in him, but greatness was being incubated in him to the point where when it was time for him to step forth in his 80s, he was prepared of God many years and knew exactly what to do, but there were some complications that arose. We'll address those in a minute. And so looking at that, I remember God telling me that he was going to hide me. Mm. Hide me in the cleft of the rock. 
Now this part I don't think I was supposed to talk about, but I do think I was, that he hid me. Because there had to be something incubated in me that I feel, my God, like never before. The stuff that was holding me, I feel it breaking off of me like chains. And I'm not testifying right now. Don't get it twisted. These are tears where I'm expressing what God is saying. But I ain't no punk. I ain't weak now. Come on here. So I feel something breaking off in the respects that while hidden in the rock, there had to be an incubation that takes place so that when I come out, I come out able to do exactly what God said. And so when you find out that there is going to be disruptions before for growth, you have to understand that there was disruption that came through a pandemic. And when that pandemic caused disruption, it was caused so that God could cause those that he had hidden to begin to think about now coming forth out of the place of hiding that he might begin to do something great and mighty in the earth. And so if you're one of those great ones that has been incubated there there's been a promise waiting up in you. There's been truth stored in you. You're, you know you're an oracle and you know that God's been using you to house the word of God. He's been hiding it and distilling it in you. Now is the time to understand that it's your time to come forth and be blossoming into those flowers of peace and joy and understanding that the world needs right now. The Bible says that there was groaning and travailing in the earth. But I like what it said in that verse. It wasn't just for the world, but we are groaning and travailing because we're tired uh, of mediocrity, tired uh, of being bound by the chains and fettered uh, by that same old mountain. And we're ready to move because uh, our name might not be Joshua and Caleb, uh, but we feel the presence of the Lord saying, take uh, your your mountain uh, and do it now while you can uh, while the strength and the anointing of God's on you to do so take your mountain Uh, so I'm so happy and grateful that God is so mindful of us, so, so willing to hide us in such a way where we don't undergo uh, the torture and the pain uh, that our life can put on you. Uh, we might feel like we went through something hard. We might feel like we've been through something tumultuous and we feel like and felt like at times uh, we cannot give up. Uh, I remember sitting at home and writing out and typing uh, my resignation notice uh, that was going to go to Brother Reggie, uh, that was going to go to him, uh, was going to Pastor King, and was going to Bishop. Uh, and right before I hit inner and pushed it forward. Uh, the Lord called Bishop Reeves to call me and say, can you come uh, and, and get me? I, I want to talk. And I said, well, this is strange because I'm ready to quit. But you got the bishop calling me, saying, come and get him. And I said, God, I don't want to go out on no east side. I'm finished with this. Ain't no more conversations. And I don't duck the bishop. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't duck him. When he called me, I said, oh, uh, yes, sir. How are you? How are you doing? It was like nothing was going on. I said, oh, yes, I'll come and get you, sir. Sure. But before it was over, I told him, I said, Bishop, it was coming. I was sending it. I'm, I'm, I said, I'm fed up, sir. And before he got out the car, he said, I'm so glad you didn't send it because I was going to send it back to you. <laughs> and I wasn't going to accept it. I said, my God, I can't get out of this thing. So we're looking at men and women in the scripture. I'm going to quote this man. He wrote a book called As a Man Thinketh. His name is James Allen. I'm going to quote some of the things that he has said. I asked the Lord, what should I say? And uh, he took me to the bookshelf. So I'm going to quote some of those things. And so listen, James Allen quotes in, in a part of his book. He said this. He says, act is the blossom of thought and joy and suffering are its fruits. Thus does a man garner 
her in the sweet and bitter fruitage of his own husbandry. Now, he is talking about how we are cultivating within us thoughts and we are considering things, we're thinking, we're talking all the time, but we have to understand that those thoughts that we are thinking about and that we are cogitating over are the husbandry that we are bringing forth. They will be either bitter or sweet. They will be productive or they will hold us back. And so no matter what we see in the book, in the Old Testament and the New, it was written to help born-again believers think correctly about Christian living. The books instruct us on how to obtain salvation and what salvation is, how to live in relationship with God and man, how to handle personal conflict. It teaches us how to be the church, how to love one another, how to share the gospel, and it teaches us now how to commune with God, when to commune with God, how, and how to stay ready to make heaven our eternal home. And so in understanding that the word of God is not something that is meant to punish and cast judgment upon, the book was written to born again believers. It wasn't necessarily meant to condemn the world. Jesus came and he said that he came to do things that would cause the world to have something in it that it could turn to to find salvation and come out of the sin and the degradation that it was in. He didn't come casting out judgment upon men and women causing them to shy back and hide but he said come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and burdened down I'll take up my yoke and take up my burden and I'll give you rest for my yoke is easy and my way is light. Mm, so he caused men and women to hear of him and be moved to a place where they can receive salvation. And so my model now is not to look and condemn, not saying I did it before, but I'm much more drawing closer to what the scripture has explained as I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to say what the word of God says and as that falls on people, it will cause them to think about whether they are ready or not. Are they going or are they staying? Because I'm a sojourner passing through. I'm, not, I'm going to wear this world as a loose garment because he showed me it was on a Friday night. Well, we're going to say it was. When my heart just wasn't right, but when I came to him, he made sure that I understood as a young man Oh my God, uh, listen, I wasn't going to church uh, and I don't think my mom was going to church when I was in the womb, but when she started going to church, uh, I was a young man who sat back and observed what was going on. Uh, I was liking what I was seeing uh, and I made up in my mind, I'm talking nine years old, that I would never leave the church. Uh, I would never go anywhere. Uh, I don't ever need the streets. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, because I'm a bad man, a jammer in Jesus Christ. I don't need the streets to teach me nothing because the wisdom of God will be my teacher and the tutelage that I receive from him will show me how to do great things. I'm waiting on Jesus already made money and didn't do it slinging dope. I don't have to render myself under the same guise as some of my uncles that was out there with Calvin Ferguson who was a known pimp uh, and had that in my family but God sheltered me uh, had me to think about salvation uh, yes I like a canary yellow suit uh, but I understand that a black suit works just the same uh, and I've got to do things decently and in order uh, because my God decrees of me uh, something he didn't decree of them uh, but it comes a point in time where somebody uh, in the family got to stand up uh, Oh, pull up their bootstraps and say, I want what Jesus has for my family and what he had for this family. I'm not one that believes that God looks over all of those people, but he gives them the opportunity to give unto them their, give unto him their heart and their mind. And I'm, I was the one waiting in the wings. I was the one sitting back. I've learned how to treat and mistreat 
women. Oh my God, I've learned how to spot them. Oh, my uncle could ride down the street, see him walking and holler out the window. Do fries go with that shake? But before I could foster in me and make a McDonald's thing out of it, he saved me and said, it won't be your words. It it won't come out of your lips, huh? but I've got preaching. And so, uh, one in three people uh, will avoid and would avoid change. Uh, goal setting is a way of creating change, uh, but it is not something that is popular among people. Uh, uh, almost one in three people uh, say that if they do not immediately see results uh, in their efforts, they will usually give up uh, and do something else. Uh, but I remember being a young man, uh, and the Lord is telling me to say all these things, relax. Uh, being a young man, visions would come to me, uh, and I went to my uncle one time, uh, and I told him the vision, uh, and he's not saved, wasn't saved, still isn't, uh, and I told him the vision, uh, and immediately he stomped on it, uh, and I felt so, my God's let down, uh, and I didn't know then uh, that a spiritual dream and vision uh, is uninterpretable by somebody who is not spiritual uh, and somebody who is not functioning uh, under the guise of the Holy Spirit. Uh, for the Spirit of God speaks expressly uh, that he gives spiritual things to those that can spiritually discern them. Uh, and I didn't know that. Uh, but I know now that the Spirit of God is only able uh, to give you the strength to interpret uh, that which is uh, according to him making it plain to you. Uh, so if you're not a prophet, you're not going to have uh, the ability to understand. Uh, but he will give you understanding uh, if it means that you are to exhort. Uh, so the mind then uh, when we're talking about thinking uh, is uh, an open system. Uh, and it being an open system uh, your thoughts that you have have placed in there are in your mind and also the thoughts that something else has placed in there. So it brings us now to Psalm in uh, Proverbs 23. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that term thinketh then deals with to split, coming from the Hebrew word sha'ar, to open, uh, to act as a gatekeeper, to estimate, uh, and then it comes from uh, thinking in his heart, putting that together, comes from the, the term heart, which is the vulgar Latin that deals with ex mover, uh, dealing with to move. Uh, so when we think about things, we move into a certain position. We move into a position mentally. We move our bodies, our hearts, and our minds uh, into a specific specific position. But I'm so happy and grateful today that God causes us to think on other things. He said in the word, think on those things that are lovely, those things that are good, of good report. And when you do, there will be some form of edification that comes unto you. When you put your things and put your mind and place them on the things that are above, something comes on you and flows through you that gives you the ability to think at a greater and higher level. Uh, but what is thought? Uh, uh, when we think of thought, thought is that energy of the mind producing and bringing into visions and bringing illustrations uh, to words that you are familiar with. Uh, so you're not going to think about a shark when I say dog. Uh, when I say dog, you'll think of a dog. Uh, when I say shark, you'll think of a shark. Uh, and so those mental energies are in there. They are working in us. They are working through us. Uh, but the problem is if we don't allow 
allow uh, the thoughts of our minds uh, to be brought under some form of subjection, uh, those thoughts will soon lead us and take us places uh, where we're not supposed to be. Um, uh, so those thoughts that I thought when I was younger, uh, it said when I thought as a child, uh, I spake as a child. When I learned to talk and think as an adult, uh, I'll speak that way. Uh, but the problem is uh, there have been thoughts and those other things uh, that we learned and thought about when we were younger um, uh, that became those things that captivated us. Uh, those thoughts are in there floating around uh, and they have our emotions tied to them. Uh, so when we move in those thoughts, uh, we are moving to fulfill what we think is the best thing for us. Uh, but our thoughts are not our own. Uh, our thoughts have to be those uh, that we surrender unto God because uh, he wants to bring forth a change. Uh, he wants to bring forth something that we've never known before, never considered. Uh, he wants to bring forth something that we've never been able uh, to bring forth into fruition. Uh, but he's causing us to think about it first uh, because in thinking about it first, we develop a plan. Uh, when we think about it first, we're able to envision those things uh, and bring them in and wrap our mind around them. Uh, listen, I feel like preaching, but I'm trying to take my time. Uh, that's why I put my hand in my pocket and say, God, help me uh, to slow down. Uh, but at the cross, at the cross, uh, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart uh, rolled away, uh, it was there by faith uh, that I received my sight. Uh, and now uh, I'm happy all the day. Uh, mm, I feel something moving. Uh, something ebbing uh, and there was something great moving and crossing uh, through these veins. Uh, it's no longer business as usual. Uh, all of the pre-pandemic stuff uh, is something I can't get with. Uh, but I marvel at the fact uh, that the pandemic was the plan of somebody. Uh, it was the plan of somebody, some group uh, and the way they thought uh, and the way they figured things would take place. Uh, they moved it into fruition and I still marvel how the thought process and the plan of men and women coming together deciding that this thing needed to take place was something that was able to captivate the entire world it might have came through something they may call a sickness and a virus but I'm looking on the fact that by power and some level of sway they were able to move the world into position to fulfill uh, something that has been brewing on the horizon uh, since the beginning uh, and the dawn of the time uh, of the enemy losing uh, his place in heaven and finding his place uh, on the earth. Uh, he knows what man is uh, and what man is composed of. Uh, he knows that if he can get us to think a certain type of way, uh, it will bring us into a halting stance uh, and bring us to a place where we can't move. Uh, mm, but I thank God for the time uh, when we can liken it unto Israel uh, when they said we won't go uh, and they stayed wandering in the wilderness for 40 years uh, but God left us the example that there were two men uh, that decided I can't wait any longer uh, I've got to get into those things that God has called me to uh, I've got to get under the fount of that anointing uh, I've got to get into the type of training uh, mm, and education that will cause this mind uh, to not be the same any longer uh, but think on the grander scale. Uh, think on the process uh, of a juggernaut uh, and be able at the moment's notice uh, to move into position uh, and through thinking be able uh, to render the enemy's plan ineffective uh, mm, and out of sorts. Uh, imagine being able to take the word of God, uh, take your call and ministry uh, and be able to render the weaponry of the enemy uh, of none effect by the 
utterance of a word, by the utterance of a statement, by the utterance of something that the Holy Ghost has told you to say, speak on, preach on, put in your decree for your morning hour. And when you say it enough, you can feel the enemy's hold loosing off of your money. You can feel the enemy's hold loosing off of your mind. You can feel his hold loosing off of your hands. You can feel it loosing off of the type of praise that God's been calling for. The type of heart worship that he's been calling for. Imagine being able to say in a word or a statement something that God has been decreed that will stop the enemy in his tracks and he not be able to move any further. If you believe that God has been calling you for such a time as this, it's no longer time to waste, but you're ready to get into your ministry. Just lift your hands toward heaven and tell God I'm here and I'm ready. I'm ready to do what you want me to do. I'm ready to praise you like I never have. I'm ready to say yes like never before. I'm sorry you got to hear it like this. And this is your first time hearing me. But I preach like this at home. I preach like this in my closet. I preach like this in the mirror. Because God is my witness. He's called me for greatness. everything uh, that God said to me. Uh, I might not even be able to recall all the times and seasons that I've been through, uh, but I believe every time I was anointed, uh, something was imparted to me. Uh, I believe every time I sit up under teaching uh, from the master teacher, uh, I receive something uh, that is shaping and changing me, uh, transforming me, uh, and making me into uh, the vessel and the instrument uh, that God's calling for. Uh, I want my voice uh, to be loud like a trumpet. Uh, so when I preach, uh, the enemy's unable to move, uh, rendered ineffective. Uh, he cries out, uh, what do I have to do? Uh, and all I've got to do is say, uh, go. Uh, and he leave the premises, uh, leave the situation, uh, leave the circumstance, uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Uh, I believe God's using uh, each and every one of us for something great. Uh, and when we find out what it is, uh, we'll be able uh, to do the same thing. Uh, say, God, here am I. Uh, use me. Uh, use me. Uh, use me. Uh, till there's nothing else. Uh, no more left. Uh, but guess what? Uh, there will be. Uh, because you'll see heaven. Uh, your home. Uh, you'll see heaven. Uh, the earnest of your expectancy uh, came through the Holy Ghost. Uh, but the fulfillment uh, of that promise uh, will come through heaven. Uh, I want to make it. Uh, help me to make it uh, to that city uh, called heaven uh, up there. Uh, I want to know. Uh, oh my God, is there anybody else uh, that wants heaven? Uh, that's got a right now praise. Uh, got a quick fast yes. Uh, got a yes Lord. Uh, in your spirit. Uh, somebody shout it out. Uh, so, uh, so thoughts then uh, influence everything about us. Uh, and you've got to learn to incorporate thoughts and emotion together uh, to build a better understanding uh, of the things of God. Uh, because the thoughts that 
produce character uh, are thoughts that start in the mind uh, and they begin to make you into those things you think about. Uh, so if you think about something that is mediocre, uh, your mind will cause you to produce mediocrity uh, in the way you sing, uh, in the way you talk, uh, in the way you speak. Uh, you walk without confidence because uh, you fostered mediocrity uh, in your mind and heart. Uh, but you'll get to a point like I did uh, where you'll say to yourself, uh, I might have missed uh, times and seasons that were appointed by God for me to go through uh, and be anointed. Uh, and I fostered mediocrity uh, in my mind and heart for far too long. Uh, I reject those feelings and thoughts. Uh, I reject the process uh, that it's brought me into. Uh, I reject the mindset uh, that I fostered for years. Uh, I cast it down and into outer darkness uh, and I consign it there in the name of Jesus. Uh, and right now I'm so happy uh, and I'm grateful uh, now that I understand uh, that God wants to use me uh, to a high and great level. Uh, and I feel uh, the anointing resting on me. Uh, I want what God wants. Uh, I see myself doing great things. Uh, I see myself, uh, my God having a level set. Uh, I feel myself uh, and I see me going uh, to greater levels. Uh, because he said if I can think it. Uh, Mm, and I can fix my mind on it I can receive it because that whatsoever I think of and I go to God in prayer and I come out doubting nothing I can have those things come on y'all ain't talking about just being rich and famous but I'm talking about having an anointing on me and in me able to speak to the devil and he's got to flee having an anointing so that when I lay hands on the sick they recover I remember when I was young when I started praying I could feel the heat in my hands but when I start thinking mediocre that power left but it didn't go nowhere at the same time but it was hindered by my thoughts because God was saying when will you think on what I'm saying and bring in your mind into focus with the power that I've got so when you pray the thing you think of that I give to your mind and you say it it shall be speak those things that are not as though they are I'm feeling good joy I'm starting to loosen up I might do something like this I might do something like this but whatever it is he's got something great for me and I'm going to give him my hands my heart going to give him my mind I feel good y'all I feel like telling you that God's looking for you too to make up in your mind I've been away from you long enough I fostered and stayed on the outer fringes of a great anointing but I'm here God my mind's made up I want it and I want it like never before use me and I stay under the fountain I stay in that place of prayer I'll stay wherever you put me because it's in the position that God places you in is where the anointing is so when you get in your lane when you recognize I've been outside of the glory I'm on it yes I do I'm going to put my mind on the things up above and I'm going to press toward the mark press toward the mark press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus oh my God he's a good God worthy of the glory worthy of the praise 
I might have to uh, put these notes down uh, and let God uh, do what he wants. Uh, but if you want it, uh, tell God he yeah. Listen, so if you think about evil stuff, you're going to bring forth uh, evil stuff. You're going to bring forth pain. Uh, but if you think about pure things, uh, those pure thoughts produce joy uh, in the things that follow. Uh, when you think the right way, you grow uh, under the anointing of God uh, because placed within us is a law of growth. Uh, that's why we continue to expand uh, in our understanding. Uh, our intellect doesn't stay the same. Uh, we might age, uh, but God God keeps bringing us to the place uh, where we can see what he's doing uh, and under that move uh, closer to where he says be uh, and if we understand uh, that we're not just beings of cause and effect uh, but yet the way we think and speak uh, can bring us into a cause and effect situation uh, where we reap what we're saying uh, we've got to understand and refocus the mind uh, and the mouth to say uh, that what Ever God says to say huh, that will bring forth virtue, huh, bring forth strength and understanding. Huh, it's time to start saying it. Huh, look at yourself right quick huh, and put your hands on you huh, and say the anointing that God huh, has said is going to come forth through me. Huh, it is going to huh, because I submit myself huh, under the hand of the Almighty, huh, under the fountain of his lips huh, and there by faith. I'm going to receive everything that God said is mine. I'm going to let him do in me and bring forth through me those things that will produce virtue in the lives of others. If we are not being anointed for ourselves only and if the word we receive is not for ourselves only but will be for somebody around us or in this world, it behooves us to gather it in. Take it in like never before. I wish I could scream like KJ right now because I do it my God I feel that anointing like when I was young creeping back up into my atmosphere and I feel something good saying it's going to be alright just keep pushing just keep moving in the direction you feel God moving you was out of town one time and the young man Philip King who's now Pastor King was still sleeping in the hotel and when I came back to pick him up the Lord told him in a dream he told him in a dream he said in the dream he said tell your brother to run where the wind blows and that next Sunday Bishop Reeves preached a message that said, run where the wind blows. And that day, I didn't make up my mind. I was going to keep running. I stood still. And I'm not standing still no longer. Because God said, the wind is blowing again. And I'm going to run just like the wind that was used to part the Red Sea. And as Bishop Reeves has said, that wind was pushing people through the floods and through the water. It's pushing me now. And it's going to keep pushing me until I'm finished. Until I'm done. I'm preaching. I'm teaching. I'm telling of the good news of Jesus Christ at a higher level, higher race. I want it. I'm getting it. And it can be yours also. So listen, so listen, our thoughts have been affecting the way we think, the way we move, and the way we've been conducting ourselves long enough. But listen, and I'm finished with this, if God has told you, and he put you in any type of program that's educational, he meant for you to finish it or else you never would have started it. I'm telling you right now that if God put you on a path 
to receive anointing and ministry, he meant for you to have it or he never would have put you on path to accomplish it. Uh, if folk in your life have died, uh, it's because God was showing you how to deal uh, with death and continue to move. Uh, he's showing us through all the different circumstances uh, that if we would keep our mind stayed on him uh, uh, through the circumstance and the situation, uh, we'll come forth speaking with greater prominence uh, those things of God uh, that will be testimony for somebody to come out uh, make it through and make it over uh, but if we stand still and speak what is not and make that our mantra then the things of death and those things that will ravage the anointing and cause you to back up in darkness will surge forward and continue to hold you in the captive position that it has been holding you. But I remember the scripture that said that Jesus came to lead captivity captive and give gifts unto men. And when he did that, he did not intend for any one of us to fall back into any state of mediocrity, any state of pain, any state of unbeing able to move forward because he died for us. Our thoughts have to remain on those things that bring forth power or else we will miss the rendezvous of God. So he's telling us that and it doesn't matter where we go, we are going to hear about the mind and thinking. Because while the enemy is trying to take captive the minds of men, God is telling the minds of men that are listening, wake up, because this is your time to move forward. And, and I feel God doing some awesome stuff through all of us. But we have to stop thinking too low, too small, and allowing thoughts to keep us bound in a position of non-mobility. I refuse to stay there. And I've been telling the Lord, God, no, sir, not this time. Not this time. I want this. Let's get it. Let's go. He needs me, and I need him. And I'm not taking anything less. Because God has called you. He wants you. And desires to do something great through you. You have to develop that mindset. I'm so happy. And so grateful. That he hasn't given up on me. But that he still wants to use me. Still wants to talk through me. Still wants me to reach people. If you're still alive. And we are in these 2000s. It is for God to use us to a high level. He has caused us to undergo incubation that we might come before him and be activated to function at high levels. And he's not going to allow us to settle back in. But at the same time, he won't make you go. But these things keep coming back to me. Run where the wind blows. It keeps coming back to me. Things that I said, oh my God. We were out of town and the man stood up there and he said, God will hide you when he's trying to incubate greatness in you. And as I sat there, the word came to me and said, I hid you in the cleft of the rock. I almost ran around that whole convention center where they had it at because I'm listening to God and my thoughts are no longer going to keep me. So when I understand that my thoughts with my emotions and, we, and I move with God in those thoughts, his anointing and power will rest on me like never before. And I will do great and mighty things, which I know not. And I'm waiting, I'm depending, and I know he's going to bring it to pass. Amen? Amen. So I thank God for you. 
I'm just a few minutes over, but God is good. And I'm already fostering a style of preaching that would put me before masses. But I can't let go of my apostolicity. Because when it's time to preach, I'm going to do it. And those that hear will receive. Amen. Amen. So if you will stand on your feet, I'm going to pray. Amen. And on the way home, you can unthaw. But I thank God for each and every one of you. He is a very present help in our time of need and trouble. And he is wanting us to bring every concern to him. Because he is the one that can fulfill every desire, remove pain. And he is the only one that really knows exactly what's going on. And when we get before him, we don't have to hide because he already knows the intent of the heart and minds of men. And I thank God for his goodness. <clears throat> Father, I thank you now for the people that have heard. Ask God that you move in a mighty way, that you touch the hearts and minds of your people here. <clears throat> Cause the word, God, to rest on them and in them. And through those words, they move into position that they will get from you that that you have been trying to loose into their hands for years. And God, we thank you for visiting us, giving us time to hear from you. We bless you and magnify you for your word and for understanding. We love you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I guess he's trying to come up here now. Amen. God is good. If there's anyone here that desires prayer, I'm not going to linger this long. You desire prayer, you can come up. Amen. I'll pray with you. You have to understand that he loves you. You have to understand that he wants you. He's calling you. Get to where he is. Because there's power there. There's deliverance. There's anointing. To bring you out. And keep you out. In Jesus name. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Why don't you worship with us? Can you raise your hands and sing along with us? I love you, Jesus. I love you. Come on, you know the words. Jesus. We're talking about our Lord and Savior. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Why don't you come? Jesus is calling you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and to bad adore you just want to tell you to tell you lord i love you more than anything i love you jesus i love you jesus i Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Jesus went to Calvary. Help
help us sing. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. That's love. Jesus went to Calvary. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you. The In Time Apostolic Christian Holiness Church would like to thank you for listening to the Anointed Word of God. For a copy of this message or to receive information about the Apostolic Christian Holiness Ministry, contact us at 614-274-8217 or write to us at 650 South Warren Avenue, Columbus, Ohio 43204 or you can visit us on the, at www.in-time.org. We are conveniently located off of I-70 West, exit 98A, just five minutes west of downtown. Thank you for listening, and until next time, may God bless you and keep you.